welcome everyone i'm kylie leke welcome to today's tutorial in today's tutorial we'll be talking on the basics of photoshop so today we'll be familiarizing ourselves with the photoshop platform photoshop is a software that is used for photo manipulations photo editing and designs so you can use it for one million and one th things so it's a multiple, multiple, multiple software and if you want if you don't have this software i basically use the photoshop cc 2017 so if you want to download and have a test for yourself just check the description below and you will see the link of where you can download this software and you can start practicing for yourself so i also want you to click this hit the subscribe button because videos like this are being created weekly at least three to four videos per week on educating yourself on graphic designs digital marketing social social media marketing and so many things video editing and so many 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 things that have been shared here so hit the subscribe button and i also want you to click like the video and also share with your friends so that they can also benefit from this video now the first thing we need to know about photoshop is on this left hand side here you can see your this is the tools these are the tools that you use in creating designs on this left pin here on this left on this right hand side sorry here we have two bars that were docked manually by myself so above here is where you have the tools properties what tools properties basically mean is these tools that are here any of them you select you you will see their properties right here any tool that you select you'll see the properties right here any tool that you select you see the properties show up right here let me select this tool here huh? you can see it's the crop tool as I, you can see it, it showed the properties here let me select the pen tool you can see it showed the properties here so this is the this, is, this tool bar here is called the tool properties bar so now the first thing you need to also know is your interface you know for me this is the interface i use for myself that's why you're saying it look this way so but for you when you first download the software it's necessary for you to actually arrange the interface to suit the way you want it so that when next you open it it's already set to your default so you don't need to do that anymore so the first thing is to do is set up your interface in a way that it will be convenient for you to always work now what i mean by setting up the interface is making the interface look just like this like this one that i do that dot here so now let me show you where you can actually do that now you come to your window window menu here then you see workspace then you can see that there are already features there are already some default in workspace that i created here we have 3d we have paint we have photography so you can create you can select any of this but if you want to create your own point to just to select this essential which is the default then you can now set you can now start setting up things by your own self okay now let me let me show you let me let me delete everything here so that you can so that you can have a feel of how I achieved everything. Okay. Okay. All right. Now you can see what everything here is empty. So what I need to do is come to my windows here. The first thing I always like to use is my navigator. The navigator allows me to zoom in and zoom out my work. So this is the navigator. It always opens with the Instagram. So the next thing I like to open is my layers. Layers for every design you create, a layer shows up here. Then the next thing I like to do is to add the history. 
the history is for every thing you are doing it saves up in the history so you can always go back whenever you want to undo any mistake you have made okay sorry i chose instagram instead of history okay this is my history and another one i like to open is my character character helps you to to edit text like your font font size and the rest then another thing i like to open is the brush so as for me i'm fine with all with this so if you notice everything is looking cumbersome it's looking it's take a fine too much of space so what i need to do is to click this arrow up here and you can see it minimizes this so you can do the same for this but i always like to leave this open i would like to leave this open so that i can easily access the layers that i have here so this is your character and paragraph then this is your brush this is your history so with this your interface is all set up now next we'll move on to is how to create a new file so you click file you create click new just like every normal package you use on your computer so if you want to open something you saved before you can click open then if you've done designs in the past using photoshop it will give you a shortcut that you don't need to go and click open just use open recent then you can select it if it's listed in the recent so i want to create a new one I click new so it opens up the the the, the list of 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 files that i can actually make use of sorry this is taking a bit of time okay it's up already it's up already okay now what you need to do okay now it's up now these are the recent ones i have created you can see then if you've saved any template these are the show up. then you can see there, there's a template for photos you can see seven by five inches you can see 300 ppi ppi means pixel per inch then if if you if you followed if you watched the video i created before before on raster and vector you understand why this is pixel and not vector so you just just go to this my channel or check the description below and you will see the video on the difference between raster and vector that designs and you can also see the softwares that can help you achieve vector designs and raster designs so yeah you have print so we have web you know for your print print is things like a4 a5 you know then your web you know your 1920 by 18 by 1080 your your 1280 by 720 so all that so now basically what you can do is simple you can actually select anyone that you've created recently or you can actually add, if you have a new dimension you can actually write it here let's let me use 500 by 500 okay this is 500 by 500 now you can see that automatically this is a square so i don't need to bother myself about the orientation if the dimensions were not the same i can change the orientation to either be or to either be a portrait or landscape then i would like to use a resolution of 300 ppi because this allows this this allows you to 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 have a smoother image than the 72 it allows you to have a smoother image than the 72 ppi so i think every other thing here is okay the background is white so you click create so before i create uh, let me show you how you can actually save your own template now to save you hit this you click this download button here then then you can give it a name you can give it a name say tutorial tutorial then you click save preset so it has saved that you want to see it just come to your saved then you see the preset here so once you're done you click create so that's that on how to create 
your own preset or if you want to open a new dimensions you know whenever you want to do designs you always work with dimensions because if i eventually want to create a banner you have to maybe a google banner now like 250 by 250 you have to design to the exact size also if i want to create uh, an instagram post like i told you in canva instagram post is usually 1080 by 1080 so you need to design it to the exact dimension so with that being said the next thing i would like us the next thing we'll be looking at is is how to use the transform tools now take for instance if i click this square shape here okay let me change the foreground okay then you you just create a random uh, um, rectangle shape now basically if you notice here we have this this here we have two colors this is foreground this is background now these two colors are basically important whenever you want to create a gradient or if you whenever you want to paint now if you want to paint using this paint bucket tool whichever of this whichever of this color that is on the foreground is what will ref is what will reflect on the layer you create okay let me explain this let me create a new layer here let me hit this pin bucket if this if what is showing is not your pin bucket tool just click here and right click you might be seeing gradient just right click then you select pin bucket tool then let me change this foreground to to green just click this foreground color and change it to green then then click your pin bucket tool then make sure you selected the layer the new one just created then select outside here then click you can see that it paints it automatically to green so if i want to change it back to white what i need to do is to change to substitute this this foreground and background color then select my pin bucket to then select this layer then hit paint again so voila everything is done then for your background here this background is usually like i selected i can select it to be transparent but i chose white but i can actually if you notice this layer is locked if i want to unlock this layer all i need to do is to double click on it then i can give it a name let's say background then click ok then it turns it automatically to a normal background then the next thing i need to do is i cannot still lock it if i want to you can see this lock tool up here you can click lock and you can unlock it now this what is lock, how this lock works such a way that it helps you to, if you've repositioned your image it helps you to lock the image that it won't be mo movable now let me this rectangle i created if i lock it you see that it doesn't allow me to move it does not allow me to move you can see that instead the background that is moving so let me undo from my history okay so we are good now what is the next thing now the next thing is i can make this object invisible all i need to do is come to its layer which is this then i click this i button here you can see it becomes invisible if i want to make it visible again then i select it then i select it now the next thing we're gonna i want to show you let me unlock this so that i can edit it now the next thing i want you to know is how to use the transform tools now to transform this what you need to do is to press ctrl t t for transform which is ctrl t you can see that these are the transform features here your x plane your y plane your w your then your 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 h then you have your your angle and horizontal vertical angle and you know other things and this is the warp yes by cubic interpolation sorry your bilinear cubic smaller blah blah then this is your warp you want to change the orientation so let me just show you basically so once you've pressed ctrl t you right click on this then you hit 
the scale to scale it means you want to grow it she understand you can see you want to grow it then if you right click on it you can use rotate if you want to rotate it you can move this way it's not the time you need to really even click the rotate to button hmm? it's not that you need to click the rotate button once you place your cursor above it this way once you place your cursor at this edge you can either adjust it if you place it on the on that particular edge it will allow you to adjust but if you place it a bit above it it will convert it to rotate then you can rotate then the center to which you'll be rotating is depending on where this this contour is or this um, anchor point is so you can move this anchor point to this place if you want this place to be your center of rotation then you can rotate it about you can see you can rotate it about so let me change this back to the center okay now the next thing you want to do is your skew you can see this is how skew works you want to move it this way this is how your skew work then your distort distort you can move it anyhow you want you can adjust any side to anyhow you want it to look like it may be a trapezoid or an amorphic structure that's in its perspective as the name implies if you want it to have a kind of real life view like a 3d view like something that is afar off you can just adjust this you can see to look as if this place is afar then you look as if this place is nearer so you can also click warp warp you can adjust any particular point on the object you know you can adjust any particular point on the object you can adjust any particular point on the object then you can also rotate by 180 you can see you can also rotate by 180 if you want to deselect if you want to come out of this warp just right click on it and click free transform you can see that so you can rotate it by 90 clockwise counterclockwise then you can flip it horizontally or you can flip it vertically so that's that on transform so if you want to transform this particular tool just remember click ctrl t then right click on it then you'll be able to see the transform features here then once you are done with any of this and if you want to adjust you just click free transform then it returns back to the normal control t dimensions you have here then once you are done with your with your adjustments then you click okay so you can drag this around you can drag this around then there's one other thing i want to show you or tell you if i press control if i want to enlarge this now and i want to enlarge it that the shape still remains the same what I have to do is press ctrl T now if I want this shape to still be uniform but I want it to I want to scale it I want to scale it to like maybe 2 to 1 but I still want the dimensions to to, to be appropriate and I need to do is once I select this this is to expand you can see if I expand you can see that the shape is changing so to remain the proportion i click the shift tool then i can expand it anyhow i want you can expand it anyhow you want then another thing is if you want to expand it i want to maintain the scale of the proportion you want to maintain the proportion then also you also want it to still remain on that particular spot you can see as i was increasing this one you can see that it was the center the center that center anchor was changing position but if you want it to remain on that particular spot that the center anchor will still remain there what you need to do is as you're expanding it press the shift button down this shift button is the one that will help you to scale it proportionally then you press the alt button the alt button is the one that will help you to to expand about that center anchor 
Now you can see, you can see that it's proportionate and it's remaining on that same spot. You can see is 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 expanding about that center anchor. So that's that on how to transform shapes or objects in Photoshop. Now the next thing we'll be talking about is the layer style. Now this particular layer, this particular layer, if you want to adjust the style, if you want to give it some effects, all you need to do is to double click on it. So you just select the layer you want to work on, which is this, then I double click on it. Then it will open the layer style properties for me. Now, these are the layer style properties. You can see bevel, stroke, inner. So I might not be, I might not need to go through all this because I don't want the video to be lengthy, but you can play around with this during your leisure time. So basically drop shadow gives the object a shadow cast this is a shadow cast you can see so you can play with this during your leisure just adjust then then we have the inner shadow you can see inner shadow creates a shadow but inside the object you know just an object usually casts whenever there's a light reflection there's always a shadow on the object itself then there's always a shadow casted on the environment so inner shadow is the shadow that is being casted on the object itself then stroke stroke is if you are trying to trace out it it creates a, a, a tracing a tick tracing around the object let me change this to another color so you see it more of your so it's more of yours you can see so this is what the stroke looks like so you can increase the size so the position here is inside that's why you see that it's as if the shape is reducing but if i change this to outside it will create the stroke outside you can see yes so that's for stroke then you have your bevel your bevel is it helps you to have this um, um glossy look it makes your object look as if it's glossy you know it's have this shine shiny look yes so you can play with this also then gradient is very very important also gradient just like I was explaining this to you here. Now, gradient is very important you know this. Now for your gradient, when you click on this, you can see it, it has taken the color of my foreground and background. So there are other default patterns here, but the first one is usually your a combination of your, um, so it's a combination of your your foreground and your background so you can also still edit this by double clicking on this when you double click on this then you can adjust you can see you can adjust which one is more you can adjust which one is more and which one is less then you can still add more colors to to it by clicking then then double click you can change this color here to pink then click OK. Then you can adjust this. I can add another color here. I just click then to add another color. And I will double click on this color. Then I can change the color here. Then click OK. So when you are done, you just click OK. Then it saves it here. Then once you are done, you can also adjust the scale here to how of to how the blend with each other you can see that this blends more then you can make the style linear radial whichever you can also reverse the colors you can see you can see it reverses the color here you can see it is white pink blue green but if you reverse it to now start from green blue you can see green blue pink white so that's that so you can adjust adjust this opacity too then you can also adjust the blend mode so that's that then you can also adjust the color also so there's all called color overlay if I, can, I want to change the color from black to white all I need to do is just to click color overlay select this then choose white or if it's red and choose red then that's it so 
inner glow outer glow works just like your drop shadow and inner shadow so that's basic on on how this works that's basic on how this works so let me give it a stroke let me give, let me leave the stroke let me remove this then i like this then okay now there are some times that you might actually want to stroke an object and it, you might not want the color inside to show which is the feel which is this black you might want this red to remain and this black not to show so what you need to do is to select that layer you want then you can see opacity you can see fill opacity will automatically reduce the trans it reduce or increase the transparency transparency of the object in full but fill is what will remove the black filling of the object you can see and leave your stroke you can see that it removes the fill of the object so basically that's how this works in the next tutorial i'll be explaining to you these tools then in another tutorial i'll be explaining to you how you can actually put in more more effects to your to your graphic designs using image and adjustment it's not it's not highlighted yet because i've not highlighted the layer yet okay so let me look at this you can see so you can see these are other effects you can turn them to black and white turn them to you know hue you can adjust the hue and saturation you can adjust the levels you can adjust the curve the exposure the posturize you know you can do so many many things so i'll stop here so that i don't make the video lengthy so watch out for the next tutorial video which is going to be the part two here i'll be explaining how these tools works so hit the subscribe button so that you can get notified when videos are being posted here and also share this video with your friends if you have any question also put it in the comment section below i'd love to hear from you and my name is leke kayade see you soon